Welcome to a model steamboat named Edith. This is part 19 and it's all about fitting the radio control system, starting by fitting the rubber grommets to the servos. These rubber grommets that support the servos help prevent the transmission of vibration from the engine in the model to the servos electronics or mechanical parts. And there is one aspect of this job that most people get wrong. This is the correct way to fit the brass eyelets. You do not fit them the other way around because if you do that and you tighten the bolts then what happens is the eyelet digs into the wood which in turn compresses the rubber grommet which is an essential part of the anti-vibration system. And the only thing that happens if you squash the grommet is Wallace gets very upset. With the brass eyelets and grommets fitted to all the servos and the servos firmly mounted in the unit it's time to drill some pilot holes. When doing jobs like this, always drill pilot holes, because if you don't do that, it's very likely that you will split the wood as you tighten the screws in place. I find that this is the best way to make the pilot holes, less chance of errors. It's a bit messy, but the brass eyelet is a good guide for the drill to make sure that the pilot hole is in the correct place. Modern servos like this are very dustproof, so it's not a problem, and all I do to get rid of the dust is blow it away with an airline, health and safety warning, Always wear eye protection when using airlines for blowing bits of wood away. The next job is to screw the servos into position using the small screws that came in the packet with the servo fittings. And if you haven't drilled the pilot hole too big, they will be just firm enough to hold the servos securely in place without falling out of the hole. When I select the drill bit to use for drilling pilot holes, I hold it up and then I also hold the screw up and I always select the drill that is exactly the same size as the centre part of the screw. Well that's a general idea and it works for me. Before I go any further I need to fit this part into the boat and what I'm doing in this clip is making a cardboard template which needs to be exactly the same size as the top part of the box. Then using a pair of scissors I cut out the piece of card and then I mark on the card the positions for the holes that are going to be drilled down into the wooden box. But I do not drill the holes at this stage, what I do is use the cardboard template on the deck of the boat and drill four holes through the deck and then I drill corresponding holes in the wooden part but I only do the front part of the box first. There is a reason for this. Once I've drilled the holes, I thread the holes 4BA. This is a 4BA tap and it cuts the thread very easily into the mahogany. But before finally fixing this box in place, I will be strengthening the threads in this wood for maximum support. Here's a small hole that I cut out in the deck when I removed the small box from the deck. And here you can see the four holes that correspond to the position of the box underneath. First of all I secure the box to the deck by using two brass bolts that screw into the threads cut in the wood. Then whilst holding the box firmly in position under the deck I drill the other two holes. I then remove the box, drill the holes a bit deeper into the wood and then thread the wood 4BA in exactly the same way as I did with the first two holes. In this clip you can see where the servo finally ended up. And once I've trimmed this green part, it will fit perfectly over the servo, the servo will operate the rudder, and all that you will see is just a push rod coming out of the green cover to an arm on the rudder. And the only buttery I will have to do is to just cut out part of this green cover to allow the push rod to work. I will have to fit some mounting parts of this green cover to hold it securely in place to the deck. The main point of the exercise is to make it so that the radio installation is discreet, as in not immediately obvious. In this clip I'm fitting the parts into the boat, starting with the engine, and that fits exactly where I thought it was going to go, quite close to the radio box but at least it will keep it dry and warm. On this pan shot you can see the gas tank in the water tank at the front, the boiler more or less in the middle, that's the condenser sat underneath the chimney with the engine behind it and then the radio box. Originally the radio control for the rudder was fitted in the superstructure but that was a bad idea because lifting off the superstructure would be a real problem having to disconnect the radio all the time. In my opinion this is a much better way to do it. Before I forget I'm just drilling out the control arms of the servos using a sixteenth of an inch diameter drill bit because I don't want the pins of the metal clevises that I'm going to be using to be a tight fit in the holes. If the clevises are tight in these holes then the power consumption can go up. And don't forget this system is designed to use dry cells for this application. There now follows a really useful tip. Before fitting the servo control arms to the servos, 
It is essential to plug all the servos into the receiver in their corresponding holes. Then turn on the radio transmitter, turn on the receiver. This will centre the rudder servo, and it will centre the throttle servo if you put the stick in the middle. Making sure that the centre servo is definitely connected to the rudder channel, which is operated by the right hand stick on the transmitter, it's safe to fit the control arm on the servo, and as you can see it's in the middle. So now I can fit and tighten the bolt that holds the servo arm to the servo, knowing that it's always going to be in this position when the stick at the right hand side of the transmitter is in the centre. This is the throttle servo and it's in the correct position because it's travelling an equal amount from end to end. The third servo, the one on the left, just uses the on-off switch on the transmitter and it's important to check that this servo arm also travels the correct distance from end to end. So that's all working fine, it's time to make the switch mounting. Marking out the brass with an old switch cover which is the same size, I'll then use the milling cutter to mill the slot. Then I file the end of the slot square using a couple of needle files, after which I drill two holes to mount the switch, and another two holes to mount the switch mounting to the wooden part. And after piloting the holes in the wood, as I've shown previously with the servos, I screwed this bracket into position. Then I fitted the switch to it. In this view you get the general idea, this is now a self-contained unit, the battery's in position, there's a volt watch stuck to the battery, which is not the ideal place to stick it, but it's only to tell you how live the batteries are. And for those meticulous eagle-eyed viewers who will spot it, you notice that the centre bolt in the centre servo arm is an M3 slot screw or machine screw or bolt. And that's because the original bolt got lost. And that's the best I can do for now, so thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.